This episode is brought to you by Experian. Are you paying for subscriptions you don't use, but can't find the time or energy to cancel them? Experian could cancel unwanted subscriptions for you, saving you an average of $270 per year and plenty of time. Download the Experian app. Results will vary. Not all subscriptions are eligible. Savings are not guaranteed. Paid membership with connected payment account required. This is Monday Matinee on the Mutual Audio Network. Come on, let's all go to the lobby. Because people are staring at us listening to these shows while we're in the theater. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. Cornucopia Radio presents... On a bright September morning in 1838, a meeting occurred on the banks of the River Thames, between two very different individuals, their destinies soon to become intertwined. Fading Down the River by Brian Stevenson and Christopher Bellamy Morning, love. Excuse me. Are you... Yes. Oh, you is. Awake-like. Indeed. Sorry to get you out this early, but... That is, we've got to catch the tide, see? You call this early? Yeah, seven o'clock, a bit, yeah. Battles have been lost and won by this time in the morning. Oh, I wouldn't know nothing about that. See, I'm Tugger, by the way. Leastways, that's what they calls me. Tugger by name, Tugger by nature, as you might say. Might I? From Beatsons. Me and the lads like. I assumed as much. They might look a bit rough and ready, but they're a decent bunch. Mr. Beatson's trained them to treat clients with dignity and respect. Has he now? How is your Mr. Beatson? Yeah, he's looking forward to meeting you. Now, uh, this name of yours? Yes? Well, the lads are having a bit of trouble with it. What sort of trouble? Well, I don't know how to say it. It's French. Parlez-vous, I'm sure. Well, that'll be why. They ain't so good with them foreign names, especially French, if he gets me drift. My ancestor had two acute E's. Two cuties? Acute E's. What are they when they're at home? If I tell you, you must promise not to snigger. I promise. They're French letters. I hope you weren't sniggering. I said I wouldn't. But my immediate ancestor lost them. Round here? No, not round here. So only the lads will look for them if it was. I doubt they would find them. Well, you only have to say the word. No, really. They'd never find them, believe me. Well, if you're sure, I like them to get things right, you know. You see, us tuggers, we've been working on a river for generations, and I've got the family name to uphold. Of course you have. We're going to get along just fine, me and you. Another family tradition? It'll be a long day and a half if we doesn't. A day and a half? Yeah, before we get to Rob arrive, Beatson's Yard. By my reckoning, if we set off now, we should reach Greenhive before the tide turns, say around two o'clock. We'll lay up there for the night and then set off again in the morning with the tide. River's not tidal much west of Greenhive, so we should make Rob arrive around tea time tomorrow. You sound very confident. It's modern transport, isn't it? Ah, yes, steam power. It's the future, Miss... Madame. I was the future once... You all right? I can feel something down my side. Oh, that'll be Jack. What's he doing? Oh, I say! Don't worry. He's just trying to make you safe. For the journey. So much for dignity and respect. Yeah, well, he can be a bit ham-fisted. He's down my other side now. Yeah, he's a fast worker. He's unlikely to find anything down there. Not since I had a disagreement with a Frenchman. I thought... I thought you was French. My ancestors were French. I'm thoroughly anglicised. 
What I size? Angli- English. Hearts of Oak and all that. Well, there's something else we've got in common. What is? Being English. English as they come, us tuggers. I hope you gave as good as you got against that Frenchie. Absolutely. Perhaps I'll find time to tell you about it on the way to Mr. Beetson's. Well, like I say, we've got... A day and a half, I know. That should be long enough for me to tell you my life story. That'll make time fly. Your Jack seems to have finished whatever he was doing. Yeah, I reckon we'll be leaving any minute. You might feel just a slight tug. A tug? Is that supposed to be a joke? It has been known to get a laugh. Among the denizens of Cheapside, perhaps. And Greenwich. You'll be surprised what tick was a fancy in that neck of the river. I told you we'd be leaving any minute. Brace yourself. Ugh. How does it feel? It's not the pleasantest experience I've ever had. Have you said your goodbyes? Last night. Right then. Rob arrive. Here we come. Full steam ahead, Mr. Tugger. Aye, aye, Mrs. T... T... Temeraire. right back there. It isn't the best view I've ever had. Uh, Sorry about that, but there's no other way to tow you, though. I've become more familiar with your stern than I ever thought possible. Yeah, well, like I said, sorry. So this ancestor of yours, how'd they come to lose those acute what's-its? E's. Yeah, them French what's-its. Letters. You can use the term provided you don't snigger. Them French letters. Well done. It was after the Battle of Lagos Bay. You'll have heard of that. Yeah, regular topic of conversation amongst the lads, that is. You haven't, have you? No. No matter. The point is, they had two acute E's in their name, but after they were captured... At this here Battle of Lagos Bay? Indeed. They were given everyday common or garden E's, which I inherited. Hence, temeraire, not temeraire. Tame rare. Oh, it's a bit of a mouthful. You'd be better off without French letters if you ask me. So this ancestor of yours gets captured, then what? Became British. Changed sides, like? There was no choice in the matter. French ships were superior to ours, so the Navy couldn't have been more pleased to have one with 74 guns. Fast, manoeuvrable, not to mention a sleek appearance. Ooh la la. Ooh la la, indeed. So when the next war came along, Mr Pitt... Mr who? Pitt, the Prime Minister. He instructed Sir John... Why are you slowing down? You see that building over there, the black and white one? Yes. Well, that's the Nelson. The lads like to call in for a quick one when they get the chance. So long as it is just a quick one. Don't worry... We'll make it to Green Eye before the tide turns, even if they have a few. Of course. Steam power. You were going to tell me about this Sir John Geezer. You mean Sir John Henslow? I don't know, do I? He was Comptroller of the Navy. Sounds painful. He was a stickler for detail. Sounds even worse. He kept a careful eye on everything from start to finish, top to bottom. Mr Pitt thought him the ideal candidate to design and build a new class of warship. That's why I came into being, and as the first to be built, they named me after my ancestor. Do you know how many trees it took to make me? Can't say as I do. Two thousand Everyone a mighty oak. Like you said, arts of oak. Indeed, and Sir John selected everyone. How long do you think the whole process took? Six months. More? A year? Keep going. I don't know. Two years. Three. Five. That'll be Jack, letting the lads know it's time they were back from the Nelson. 
I was finally launched on the 11th of September, 1798. So I'm just a few days short of my 40th birthday. Oh, I don't suppose you're going to have much of a party at Mr Beatson's. Who knows what lies ahead? I never thought Mr Beatson's would be my last birth and I'd be tugged there by... A... By the likes of me? The future, which I'm rapidly running out of. The lads are back. They weren't there long. Told you they were only in for a quick one. How very abstemious and obedient. Not at all like my first crew. Yeah, well, you should see them on a Saturday night. I've seen sailors on a Saturday night, believe me. Next stop, Green Eye. Mate, in good time already. Thanks to your obedient crew. Yeah, they're a good bunch. Not that they have much to object to by the look of things. But a captain's a good one. Firm, but fair, you might say. As was my first captain. Unfortunately, the exigencies of serving one's country... You and... like them big words, don't you? Sorry. Well, it ain't my fault, you see. I've never had no schooling. I don't mean to belittle you. Well, there you go again. Sorry. Don't keep saying you're sorry. Just use words I can understand. The war was over, but Pitt didn't trust the French. Can't say as I blames him. He was worried they would seize Jamaica, and you know what that would mean. No sugar for the lads to put in their tea. Oh, they wouldn't like that. Nor with the rest of the nation. So the Navy was kept on a war footing, even though we weren't at war, and the crews weren't allowed to go home. That's what I meant by the exigencies of serving one's country. So some of them mutinied, including mine. Right. They barricaded themselves below. When the first officer went to speak with them, they jostled him. Jostled? It might sound harmless enough, but the Navy takes a dim view of it and often flogs the perpetrators. And was they? Flog-like? No. The captain thought better of it even after they broke into the liquor store. <sighs> yeah, well, you know what sailors are. Actually, they showed remarkable self-restraint. Only one of them became drunk and abusive. He was tried by the mutineers themselves, I might add, and clapped in irons. Then they wrote a polite letter to the captain explaining their grievance. Well, what did he say? He was sympathetic. He conveyed the men's grievance to the Admiralty who were also sympathetic. It sounds like they got a lot of sympathy. Even from the time. Get away. But mutiny is mutiny. Of course it is. And can't go unpunished. Of course it can't. And it's a hanging offence. So was they? All lang like? Not all. Only the ringleaders. Twelve in all. Strikes me the Admiralty showed remarkable cell. What's its name? Restraint. They'd learnt from the Spithead mutiny. What's that when it's at home? Something even more serious. And it taught them you can push men only so far. That's a bit like me. Oh? Yeah, if they push me too hard, I blows a gasket. I'm starting to feel peckish. Peckish? Yeah, you know, peckish. Like, like I need some coal to keep me going, like. It's not a sensation I've ever experienced. Well, I suppose you just need a bit of wind. Precisely. But if there ain't no wind, you're scuppered. Yes. Whereas me, I just has to call into a coaling station and Bob's your uncle. Speaking of which, there's one just round the bend. I'll let the lads know they need to call in. There, should have got the message. There you go. We'll pull in soon. You must have seen a few things in your time. Why? Because I'm so old? No, because you've been all over. You've hobnobbed of the best of them. Me? I only steams up and down the Thames. I don't get to meet no one special. I don't see no action. It's not all it's cracked up to be. It's there though, isn't it? At least you've done it. You've got it under your belt. Tell us about one. An action? Yeah. Let's think. You've heard of Trafalgar Square? Yes, yeah, out west, ain't it? Do you know why it's called Trafalgar Square? Well, they has to call it something. True, but there's usually a reason why a place has a particular name. 
the Cromwell Road, for instance, named for Oliver Cromwell. So Trafalgar Square, it's called Trafalgar Square because of some geezer called Trafalgar. No, not some geezer, some... a sea battle. In fact, our greatest sea battle off Cape Trafalgar, and I was there. Not just me, of course. Vic was also there. Who? I didn't catch that name. Victory. Ain't he something to do with the new queen? In a way, the new queen, by whom I assume you mean Her Majesty Queen Victoria, visited him recently in Portsmouth and was outraged by the state he was in. A once mighty warrior reduced to, well, something like me. I reckon Jews have a soft spot for him. We went through a lot that day. Enough to make you blush. I'm not blushing. You look as if you is. It must be the sun reflected off the water. Of course it is, of course it is. So what did you go through that day? I was about to tell you. Vic led the attack and I was right behind him. Oh, I bet you was. Do you want to hear this? Yeah, yeah. Then stop interrupting. We were soon surrounded by the enemy, who then tried to board us, but our crews were having none of it. Good lads. After some bitter fighting, our lads beat them off, then returned the compliment by boarding them. So it all worked out for the best then? Not quite. Oh, yeah. You lost the what sits down your starboard side. I lost a lot more than that, as did Vic. But there was something else, something far worse. And it made a deep impression on us. On the whole nation, in fact. What was that, then? You know the pub, the Nelson? Yeah. Do you know who Nelson was? He was, uh, some sea captain. Not some sea captain. The Admiral of the fleet. And Vic was his flagship. Oh, you really as mixed with the Iron Mighty. Unfortunately, being high and mighty doesn't protect you from a sniper's bullet. Is that what happened to him? Got shot by a sniper? At the very moment the enemy was boarded. The sniper must have been in the rigging. The bullet entered Nelson's shoulder and passed down through his lung into his spine. Nasty. So he never knew he won the battle? He did, actually. He wasn't killed instantly. He survived just long enough to be told the news. And then his body was thrown overboard? No. It was pickled and brought back to England. They should build a statue after him and stick it in that there Trafalgar Square. It would be a fitting monument. I see we're pulling in again. Green Ive, ain't it? Tide's turning and we're halfway there. We've made good time and you'll get a well-earned rest. I could do with one. I don't know, Miss T. I seem to be feeling it a bit lately. Come now. You're a spring chicken. The future, remember? Right now, as I feel more like one that's had its neck wrung. Let's not extend the metaphor too far. If that means stop complaining... Not at all. They were words of encouragement. You're doing an excellent job and in the prime of life. Yeah, right. about yourself? Uh, well, there ain't much to tell. Like I says, it just steams up and down the river towing. Decrepit old has-beens to the breaker's yard? What? Fine old ladies to their final resting place. I tell you what, though, I might not be made of no 2,000 oaks, but you know that Mr Brunel? Of course. He designed and built me, he did. That's quite a claim to fame. You wouldn't think it, though, would you? They said I was just a flash in the pan, a novelty at first, wouldn't be up to the job. So Mr Brunel, he organises a tug of war, me against the sailboat. Even said the other fella could use his oars. Doesn't sound very fair. It weren't. It didn't stand a chance. I take it you won. Hands down. So then they said I'd mess up the river, I'd spill oil and whatnot, cover it in soot. And I suppose it does, but there's one thing they can't get away from. I gets the job done. Besides your average river man, he ain't too fussed by a bit of muck. You won't recognise after him if he had a wash. Now they can't get enough of us steamers. 
And you were the first. Yeah, reckon I was. They say Mr. Brunel's building the biggest ship in the world now, and it's a steamer. Ain't no one bothered about the guns that one's going to kick at. And you are its progenitor. Yeah. If you say so. sound a bit the worse for wear, Tugger? It's always the same these days, Mrs. T. I have some trouble getting started of a morning. There we are. There's an awful lot of black smoke. Oh, well, it's better out than in. I'm ready for anything now. So, you was a national hero. Was I? Well, after what you were telling me about yesterday, the battle of, uh, what's the name? Trafalgar. I, I suppose I was. <laughs> Though it didn't feel like it, what with all the damage I'd suffered. The old Duke was right. Old Duke who? Wellington. Well, not he the Prime Minister a while back? And a soldier before that. The only thing worse than a battle lost is a battle won. That's what he said after he won the Battle of Waterloo. Yeah, he should know, then. I felt much the same after Trafalgar. It took over a year to repair the damage. Oh, but you must have got some plum jobs after that, though. Not really. Trafalgar was the high point. The 30 years since then have been something of an anticlimax. I fear I shall fade into obscurity and never be remembered. I remember, yeah. You're very sweet, Tugger. I believe I've embarrassed you. Yeah, well, like I embarrassed you yesterday. You and Vic, remember? That makes us quits. I was a prison hulk down in Cornwall for a while. You? With your refinement? You soon lose it when you're stripped of your sails and crammed with prisoners. You rot along with them. Crying shame if he's asked me. The Navy thought it was all I was fit for, me and lots of others, including Vic. Many ended up in the breaker's yard, a fate I escaped. Until now. It's a crying shame, all right. It didn't work out too badly in the end. A few years ago, I was brought back here and made guard ship of the ordinary and captain superintendent ship of the fleet reserve in the Medway. What the hell is that? It meant I was moored off Sheerness and given a couple of my guns back to scare the gulls off. Oh, that was you? It was. It put the wind up the lads a few times, that did. They thought they was at war. Had there been a war, the Navy would have sent real warships faster than I, better armed, better armoured. Steam-powered, most probably. All the same, yous was back on top. I wouldn't say that. Right? I knew something was wrong. Where? Down below. I wish I could help. I'm a little different down there. Oh, the lads will sort it out. Hand me the spanner, Jack. Right you are, Skipper. No, it's no good. Well, budge. Let's try the lump hammer. It's not gonna work. We're starting to drift. Well, at least wait, we'll be back in Sheerness before we know where we are. What about, uh, Tamara? Who? That ship we're tugging. Tamarera? What about her? Ain't she still got one of her sails? So? She could pull us. All the way to Rotherhide? We'd be a laughing stock at Beatson's. No, just as far as Brunel's yard skip. We're not far off. You're right. Me and some of the lads can sail her. You and the rest can stay here with Tugger. Hey, how would you like to steer? Very much. That's how I started out, taking the rudder on my dad's rowboat. And I'd like to captain a sailing ship again. It'll be just like old times, eh, Skip? I'm being boarded. Don't worry, it's only the captain with some of the lads. It's all part of the plan. What plan? To get us to Mr Brunel's yard and get me fixed. I hope they know what they're doing. Captain's an old hand. He started on sailboats. 
We'll soon be at Mr. Brunel's. I wonder if he'll remember me. Good morning. Morning, Mr. Brunel. You've brought Tugger. But who's the other fine beauty? Is it possible? It is. The Temera. Well, I'll be. We're taking her to Beatsons. The fighting Temera. Looks more like she's taking you. What's the problem? Crankshaft. It always is with Tugger. Design fault, I'm afraid. Soon have it fixed. There you are, Captain. Good as new. How much do I owe you? Oh, nothing. Eh? You've already paid me. Seeing Temeraire in the flesh is payment enough. Not likely to see her again. No one is. Thanks for helping me out back there, Miss T. It was the least I could do. Feels like a new tug, now. In that case, we'll soon be there. Yeah, soon be there. Is that someone with an easel? Where? Over there on the bank, under those trees. Oh yeah, that's old Bill. Old Bill? Bill Turner. He's always down by the river, he is. Come rain or shine, him and his easel, painting. Captain usually gives him a two. There you go. Wait for it. Wait for what? You'll see. He's doffed his hat. Always does. What does he paint? I don't know. Ships, I expect. You don't suppose he'll paint me? You're a ship. I was a ship. Not anymore. Look at the state of me. I don't want to be painted like this. Relax, Miss T. There's no saying he's painting you. He might be painting that clipper or that trawler. Let's hope so. I don't want to be portrayed in my present condition. Well, Miss T, this is it. Yes, Tugger, it is. Beatson's Yard. That's Mr Beatson, the tall, thin one. He has an air of authority about him. I'm glad I had the pleasure. Oh? Of meeting you like. It's been an interesting day and a half, as you said it would. Well, I don't recall saying nothing about that. I remember distinctly. I also remember being astonished that it wouldn't take longer. I get you now. I thought you meant I'd said it would be interesting. Well, not that it hasn't. It's just a pity about the day and a half, though. Just wish it could have been longer. This is Mr. Beatson, the Temeraire. What kept you? Drank you after again. Had to call in the Brunel to get it fixed. How much for that sir's back? Nothing. Nothing? He said seeing her was enough. Seeing who? Temeraire. <laughs> he must be going soft in his old age. Just as well he's not billing us though. Getting rid soon. A tugger? Yeah, too many breakdowns. Can't expect a free one every time. Got a new one on order from Tangy's brand spanking new. Should be here by Christmas. Anyway, can't spend all day chatting. Got another job for you. Tom, don't stand still, you know. Now the sunset breezes shiver. Temeraire, Temeraire. And she's fading down the river. Temeraire, Temeraire. Now the sunset breezes shiver. Temeraire, Temeraire. And she's fading down the river, Temeraire, Temeraire. But in England's song forever, she's the fighting Temeraire. You've been listening to Fading Down the River. It was written and directed by Brian Stevenson and Christopher Bellamy. The production and editing was by Peter Beeston. This work starred... Jasmine Warwick as Temeraire and Andy Rushworth as Tugger. It also featured the additional voices of Mel Shiner as the captain, 
Justin Mayer as Jack, Lucas Webley as Brunel, Jerry Kokic as Beetson, and Christopher Bellamy as the narrator. An extract of the poem, The Fighting Temeraire by Sir Henry Newbolt, was featured in this production, and the music used throughout was Remembering to Forget by the champion of What If, licensed via gemendo.com. This work is released under a Creative Commons agreement. For more information and access to even more amazing audio drama productions, visit us online at cornucopia-radio.co.uk. Thank you.